Dr. Karen Boomer, who plays the tuba. wonderful to be here to have the opportunity to um, demonstrate for you what the tuba is capable of, both technically and musically. Um, like Anjali, a lot of times when I tell people that I play the tuba, I'm met with kind of a blank stare. And I think I, I see this sort of musical thought bubble above people's heads that I think sounds something like this. <laughs> so... I want to dispel right away any association with, uh, between the tuba and the A&W Root Beer song. <laughs> People often ask me why I chose the tuba. That question is usually accompanied by a remark like, bet you wish you played the flute. And in, in my case, I can, I can say definitely not because I actually started off my instru instrumental career, career playing the flute. Um, I started flute in grade seven, and I really had my heart set on playing this instrument, and I was really sort of your typical flute player. But the first day of class, the teacher, um, she wanted to introduce us to all the instruments before we made our choices, so um, she would sort of put each one together and show it to us, and then invite a couple of students up to give it a try. So we went through the whole list, and then we got to the tuba, and she sort of hoist this horrible old tuba, like held together with duct tape and stuff, <laughs> over her head, and she says, who would like to play this instrument? And of course, there was dead silence. And then this kid from the back row, who's your stereotypical tuba player, he kind of schlumps up to the front of the room, and he tries the tuba, and it's horrific. And um, she said, would anybody else like to give it a try? And I raised my hand, and this was kind of a little provocative. The tuba wasn't really my type, but... Um, <laughs> I went up and, and uh, gave it a shot, I made a pretty good sound on it, and, you know, that was that. I, I, it was fun, and I played the flute and kept playing the flute up through high school. And um, when I got to, I think it was about grade 11, I still played flute. I was, I was a pretty good flute player. And um, we didn't have a tuba player for our band, and I had this music teacher, a wonderful man, um, and he was trying to entice one of us to take up the tuba. So every day at the end of class as we were packing up, he would start chanting, think tuba, think tuba. I'm not kidding, he would really do this. And this went on for months and months and months, and nobody, um, nobody took him up on it until finally, um, January of that year, I said, okay, fine, I will play the tuba. So he started to laugh, and uh, once he'd stopped laughing, he sort of wiped the tears from his eyes. He, um, he just gave me a tuba and a mouthpiece and a fingering chart, and while the band class met in one room, I went into the other classroom and sort of taught myself how to play the tuba. So I sort of went, went on like this through the rest of high school, playing both instruments. And I had a little system worked out that if the tuba part was too boring, I played the flute part. And if the flute part was too hard, I played tuba. <laughs> and uh, this worked pretty well all the way through high school until I decided that I wanted to study music in university. Now, when you go to university as a music student, you need to pick one instrument, and that is your major. So um, I sort of... I had to pick one of these, the flute or the tube, and I agonized over this decision. And um, it seemed pretty obvious that the flute was the best choice. I mean, flute, it's lighter than the tuba, and they're less expensive, and the flute is a respectable instrument. <laughs> so I was thinking, okay, this is the obvious choice. And then I thought, wait a minute. If the flute's so great, there are probably hundreds and hundreds of flute players out there. But tuba players are not exactly a dime a dozen. So I decided to uh, choose the tuba because I thought it would be a little less competitive. Um, and that is how I became a tuba player. <laughs> what I discovered was that the tuba has this beautiful lyric, lyrical and expressive quality that I had no idea that it possessed. And... Um, I really started to dig this kind of playing, this sort of expressive playing. And I'm going gonna, I'm gonna, to um, show you an example of that now. This is a piece by Claude Debussy. It was actually uh, composed for flute. It's called... <laughs> <laughs> it's called Searings, and it depicts the story of the uh, nymph, I believe, Syrinx, who was being uh, pursued by the god Pan, and went to the river and asked the river nymphs for 
help, and they came up and turned her into reeds. And then Pan came and cut the reeds and formed them into what we know as the Pan Pipe. So that's the mythology behind this. I don't know if it really holds up um, when you play it on tuba, but I think it works quite well. to say a few words about a couple of the uh, unique challenges that uh, face one as a professional tuba player. It's a sort of twofold challenge. One is, what am I going to do to make a living? The other one is, um, it's kind of an image issue that the tuba has. <laughs> Clearly, that requires no explanation, so great. Um, and so for me, this has really posed a very exciting and rewarding creative challenge in that I've kind of had to create work for myself um, and create opportunities for myself, which have, um, I've needed to build in a little bit of a sales job for the tuba in that. So for example, a few years ago, I created a one-woman show called Girl Meets Tuba, where I, it was kind of a romantic comedy where I, I tell the story of my love affair with the tuba and uh, then play the the tube at intervals as well, and this is a nice way to kind of um, finesse the audience a little bit and introduce people to the idea of the tube, because I really do think it's a great instrument. This piece, the tube, is used in a really unusual kind of way. So it's called fnug, and fnug is a Norwegian word meaning um, something um, light and weightless, like a snowflake. So... Um, <laughs> The whole opening section, the tuba, is played kind of like a didgeridoo. And the way I do that is um, I change the vowel shape in my mouth. So normally when I would play, I would have kind of an O kind of shape. And what I'll do is change it sort of between O, E, O, E, O. And you can hear just on a note on the tuba, it changes the sound. You can hear that? Yes? So I can add to that effect by um, singing as well. You can hear it, it sounds, you know, it's got a sort of didgeridoo-esque kind of quality. So 
You'll hear that throughout the, uh, the piece. And the other technique you'll hear, which I need to be really, uh, I need lots of water for this, is the tuba played kind of like a drum. And in this, what I'll be doing is I'll be getting the air to the lips, but before I can actually make a buzz, um, if all goes according to plan, uh, sort of stop the air, and it makes kind of a, like a thwack kind of sound. So it makes kind of a drum-like sound. So um, that's what's going on. This is called Fnug by Oystein Badzvik. Thank you. 